Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. I also want to say hello to our new friends in Taiwan we're following with, so hello in Taiwan. And you'll notice this is the first week I've come in without a mask because we are following CDC guidelines and everybody in the building here has been vaccinated that we know of. Uh, but still, when I'm in public and in large groups that I don't know, I wear my mask because I don't trust anybody. I mean, I trust everyone, but I don't really trust anybody. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about what's going on in the world and then some really cool sciences uh, last week. First of all, South America is raging. That's where all the new, the most of the new infections are. Uh, Uruguay, Argentina, Argentina, Paraguay, Colombia, and Chile are all in the top 10 in recent cases uh, per 100,000 residents. India has been the biggest mess, but it's finally coming down. And there have been about almost 2 billion doses given worldwide. If you look at the world map for hotspots, it's all really South America. I mean, you look at it, South America is really on fire. But let's talk about India, because India has been kind of an ongoing tragedy. They're, been, they're running about 200,000 cases per day, um, you know, and that's a decrease. They were up to 450,000 a day. There have been over 27 million reported cases. We all believe, including the Indian scientists, that it's probably double that, that the reporting isn't very good. There have been 325,000 deaths reported, which is a decrease in four, by 4%, 4 but it's still bad. When you think about us, we've been, you know, we're close to 600,000 deaths. They're already at 325 reported. But again, most people feel that's probably twice that number. Uh, so India is really a mess. The only good thing you can say is it's finally beginning to come down, as you can see. It's finally coming down. The sad part is they just have not been doing very well with vaccinations. Only 3% of the population is vaccinated. So we're holding up, we're hoping Peter Hotez's vaccine, which is in phase three, will get approved soon. It's a relatively inexpensive, easy to, to administer one shot. We hope that works. That could do a lot. What's interesting is the variants of concern in India really have taken off. The B.1, 6, 17, dot 1, and 2. If you look at the variants, they have just totally, this blue line has just totally uh, skyrocketed as the dominant variant. That variant has eight additional mutations in the spike protein. It's two that are similar to the United Kingdom variant and one that's similar to the Brazilian variant. <laughs> the World Health Organization decided there were so many letters and numbers and dots in it that they changed it. It's now called the Delta variant. So we're not calling it the India variant because we don't want to discriminate against India, but it's the Delta variant. Uh, the good news is that all the known vaccines should work for that variant as well. Also in the news, Japan. <laughs> the Olympics are coming up. I mean, what a mess. If you, Japan's got, you know, it's really also increasing number of cases. They had a huge fourth surge. But the problem with Japan is they are way behind on vaccinations. I have no idea, but they have only 5% of the population vaccinated. And the Olympics start July, July 23rd. So they keep saying they're going to do the Olympics. I have no idea how that's going to work. For example, the CDC just came out with recommendations, don't go to Japan. <laughs> so it's going to be hard to go to the Olympics if the CDC says we shouldn't be going to Japan. Well, turns out what the Japanese are going to do is they're not inviting anybody. So apparently right now the plan is only Japanese can go to the Olympics. Now, they're trying to vaccinate all the athletes so they can get the athletes there. But with only 5% of the whole country vaccinated, they're going to assemble in large groups. I mean... I don't, I don't know what they're thinking. But in a, lot of, a lot of the people in Japan are saying, like, you know, we probably ought to call it off. My guess is they'll go ahead with it, and it'll probably be a disaster for the Japanese. But we'll, we'll see. Ho hopefully, at least our athletes will all be vaccinated. And, of course, I'm not going. No, one's, no one with the, <laughs> with the brain is going to Japan to watch a bunch of people run around. It's just not going to happen. Now, the other interesting thing is Vietnam is on, in the news because they had four people show up with a new variant, a new, the Vietnamese variant. You can't leave the Vietnamese ever out. They, they, they survive no matter what, and their variant is looking like it might be a new one. It's very much related to the India variant. Uh, it has a couple of new uh, mutations in it. You know, they haven't been that uh, run, overrun by the, the virus. There are about, about 8,000 cases and about 50 deaths. But the reason everyone's turned their attention. It's a new one. They found four people, and the fourth wave in Vietnam is looking pretty steep. So 
we're going to keep an eye on Vietnam to see what's going on with there. So what about in the United States? We're doing pretty good. Uh, our case numbers are continuing to fall. We're down to 23,000. Remember, we were just a few hundred thousand a day just recently. And we're down to 23,000. Almost all the states are falling uh, in terms of number of cases. No state is seeing a major increase. Uh, and we've got about half of the population uh, has had at least one dose and about 40% have been fully vaccinated. Uh, the problem, of course, is our vaccine schedules have dropped off. But the numbers look really good. If you look at the curve, you know, we're continuing to trickle down. This is kind of the rate that the Institute for Health uh, Evaluation Metrics uh, uh, had um, predicted with us increasing our mobility back to pre-COVID levels. We're not going to get down to zero anytime quick, but we are falling steadily, which is a good thing. There's still some hot spots, mostly in the middle of the United States. And what's really amazing to me is how quickly the United Kingdom variant took over. If you see that in light orange, that was the relative percentage of variant, UK variant, and now it's the dominant variant throughout the United States. <laughs> if you look at Texas, we, we have a few hot spots. Guess which, guess which county's the hot spot? Our friends in Timmy County, they just can't get their acts together. Those javelinas, I don't know what they're doing down there, but they got to stop it. You stop it. In the Texas Medical Center, things are about the same. Our, our value is under one, but it's not as low as we wanted. It's 0.92. Uh, the good news is we're down to 315 cases. I, as I've said many times, I'm not going to pretend all things are good until we're down to 40 cases. So we got a ways to go. And the good news is that our testing percentage is down below 3% for the first time, 2.9%. And our hospitalization rates are, are continuing to fall a little bit slower. We had 67 people admitted a day per day this past week on a rolling uh, seven day average. And we're almost up to uh, 2 million people who've had w at least one dose. So that's all good. And while the, the vaccination rates have fallen, the good news is you can see this increase in, in vaccination rate. It's really in the 12 to 15 year old groups. So as kids start getting vaccinated, hopefully they will fill in for what we need. So let's talk some science. Two really great papers. You know, one of the big issues, and I keep getting this question, I tried to answer it last week, is how long will immunity last? And, you know, we've been following this sort of waning antibody levels, and so it's been a little concerned it won't last that long. So it's a really great paper that was published in Nature uh, looking at the fact that uh, when infected, uh, we get these bone marrow plasma cells that's, that stay persistent for a long time. And so here's the, the, the real hard to understand uh, or hard to resolve conflict. You know, if you've been infected, there's definitely a lower rate of reinfection. So there's clearly that fact. But the second fact is, but antibodies are waning. So how do you put together the fact that you're resistant, but your antibodies are waning? So this group looked at seven, from WashU, they looked at 77 patients with mild infections. Their antibodies declined in the first four months after uh, vaccination, but then they sort of stayed, st uh, steady for seven to eight months after that. But what was interesting is they found spike-specific uh, bone marrow plasma cells. In other words, they had found plasma cells that make antibodies that are uh, very specific for the spike protein in, in patients who have been infected. And these cells are what are called quiescent plasma cells. In other words, they're part of the long-term humoral immune response. So when they did bone marrow, they found these plasma cells after people were infected that persisted in this quiescent state. So that means that you're going to have a long-term response. That's very exciting because that suggests that you will have a long-term humoral antibody response, which should give long-term protection. So that was very, very exciting. And then from uh, Nusens Weig's lab in, at uh, Rockefeller, published in BioRx, there was another uh, sort of addressing the same issue, which looked at uh, how does vaccination boost uh, neutralizing antibodies. So they looked at 63 patients who had been infected with COVID and assessed them one, six, and 12 months after they'd been infected. Uh, and, with, and they also looked about half of these patients uh, uh, who had also, in addition to being infected, received an mRNA vaccine. So if you just got infected and did not have a vaccine, you had three big responses. Uh, you had reactivity to the receptor binding domain and sp spike protein, that's good. They had strong neutralizing antibody, that's good. Uh, and the number of uh, receptor binding domain specific memory B cells stayed stable for six to 12 months. In other words, those memory cells, we were just talking about those cells, are stable from six to 12 months. That's without a vaccine. 
So here's the cool part. If you also got a vaccination, all those three parameters were the same. They, you, they had this long-term uh, memory that stayed. But in addition to that, they had a, the generation of neutralizing antibodies that were really, really good against the variants of concern, even more so than if you got it in the natural infection. So this says, if you've been naturally infected plus you get a vaccination, you're gonna have a very specific and highly reactive response to all those variants of concern. So when people start saying, well, I had it, should I get it? <laughs> this tells you, go, go get it tomorrow because it's really a fantastic you know, observation. First of all, you have immunity that lasts a long time. And secondly, if you've been vaccinated, uh, if you've had it and got vaccinated, you're gonna have a great response to the variants of concern. So how does this play out in real life? Let's go back to that chorus in Washington. Uh, you remember March 10th, 2020, before there were any reported cases, uh, this choral group got together uh, in, Sag in Skagit Valley, which is an hour north of Seattle, a little agricultural hub famous for its spring tulip festival. And they went in and they, did, they practiced social distancing, they washed their hands, no one was wearing masks at the time. And of the 61 people who went to rehearsal, 52 got COVID. I mean, that was one of the first, you know, really strong evidence that aerosolization was clear and also that singing was bad. Several, hospital, several people were hospitalized and two of the choir members actually died. So there are two co-presidents of this uh, choral group and one got COVID and one got vaccinated. And the big argument is that the one that got vaccinated wants everybody to be vaccinated before they reassemble as a, as a, as a chorus. But the one who got uh, COVID said, I don't want to get vaccinated. I already had COVID. Well, she needs to read that paper because <laughs> if she got COVID and she gets vaccinated, she'll have more protection than the people who just got vaccinated. But anyway, there's a big battle and it's a, it's a big issue in Skagit, Washington. But, you know, they should just, everybody should get vaccinated. I don't know why there's, why would you stop being in the chorus just because you, you know, you had to get vaccinated, even if you had COVID. Now, I also want to point out that we're very much involved with the booster shot issue. Uh, Dr. Robert Atmar in our uh, virology group uh, is starting a study that has three groups of participants, uh, those who've received either Pfizer, Moderna, or J&J, &J, and they're recruiting people who've been vaccinated, they're 12 to 20 weeks out, and then they're giving a booster of Moderna. And the idea is to establish safety, to look at antibody responses, to see if you get a booster effect, and then also can you get a booster with a different you know, vaccine type? So if you had Pfizer and they get boosted with Moderna. It's a really important study. This is uh, long-term gonna be very helpful. They have a second cohort of patients that have never had been vaccinated. They're gonna look at vaccination and follow them over time for immune response. It's a multi-center stri uh, center trial that's in 10 different sites across the country. We've already enrolled our first patient and we're hoping to get a full recruitment uh, fairly soon. So that's really, really exciting. So lots of stuff going on in the world today. Uh, two great uh, articles that help us understand uh, how long we, we expect to be protected. All very positive, incredibly positive news. So uh, except for the middle problem with the Olympics, it should be a great summer. So have a happy weekend. I can't wait to see you next week.